Hello. Welcome to how to remotely access your internal network using Fsense. For remote access I built a virtual private network myself. I installed WireGuard on Fsense to build a virtual private network. By default this application is not available on the router. So on the device management page you go to package management and install the application. You find the package named WireGuard. Next you install it. After completing the installation your router will have a new interface. That is the interface of the virtual private network. The virtual private network creates a tunnel connecting the devices together. You go to wire guard settings. You create a new tunnel. I use the default port, you can change it if you want. If you change the default port then the steps to configure the firewall you use the correct port. Next you create a new public key. It is used to configure the client files. I will mention it in the next steps. You should write it down to use in the next step follow. Next you set up an IP address for this VPN interface. You create a new subnet different from the one used in your internal network. Each device in the VPN has a different IP address but is in the same subnet. I have written down the information about the devices for you to follow. By default this VPN service is disabled after the installation is complete so I enabled it. I have completed creating a new tunnel. You can create different tunnels if you want. Next you create rules on the firewall. I create a new rule to allow clients to connect to the server. I open port 51820 on the firewall. Next on the VPN interface you allow all packets to go through. I create a new rule to allow any packet to go through the VPN interface on the firewall.
After completing the firewall configuration you create a new client. This client connects to the server via the tunnel just created in the previous step. To add a new client you need its public key. So you download and install the client application on your computer. On your computer go to the home page and download the installer for the client. After completing the installation you add a new tunnel. The application automatically creates a new configuration file. Here you will get a public key of the client. You copy it to add a new client on the router. I copy and fill the public key on the router management page where I am adding a new client. I allow the client to access all networks. You can limit the subnets if you want. So I have completed the tunnel creation and added a new client on the router. Next I will complete the configuration file on the client application. I set an IP address for the client. This IP address is in the same subnet as the server, but the two devices have different IP addresses. I write down the configuration parameters of the devices for you to understand better. Next I add the configuration parameters of the server virtual private network. I add the server's public key. I mentioned this public key in the previous step, it is used in this step. If you did not write it down in the previous step, find it in the tunneling step on the router. I allow the client to access all subnets. Next you set the public app address that the router uses. You will find the public app address on the device control panel. I have completed the configuration on the client. Now I test the result by establishing the connection. I cannot connect to the router after establishing the VPN connection because the two devices are on the same local network. So I disconnect the wired connection and connect to another wireless network. I do so so that the two devices are on two different networks.
I established the VPN connection over the internet. The client is assigned the same IP address as I have established. Although the two devices are separated by the internet, the client still successfully connects to router. You access the device management page and see the virtual private network connection status to know more. Here you know the connection status connection time, traffic. So I have completed building a virtual private network on FSense. You use this method for remote access. There is another problem I want to solve, which is the dynamic public app address. You will have difficulty using a dynamic public app address to establish a connection between two devices. To solve that problem, you use a dynamic domain name service. I use a service called DuckDNS. I use a Google account to create a free account. With this service, you will create several free domain names. I create a new domain name and use it to update my dynamic public app address. After completing the domain name creation, I look for the service installation instructions on FSense. The setup steps seem simple, I will follow the steps above. On the device management page, I go to Service Settings Dynamic Domain Service. Duck DNS service is not in the list so I added it manually. You just copy the link as instructed. The link includes the domain name and the key. Next you save the settings. So I have completed the dynamic domain service configuration. It solves the problem of dynamic public app address. If you use static public app address then skip this step. On the client application instead of connecting using public app address, I use domain name. So you don't need to worry when the IP address changes. Above are the steps to install and configure WireGuard on FSense. You use it for remote connection. This is a free and high speed virtual private network application. You are not limited to the devices connected. If you have many devices connected to the router then you need powerful hardware. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. I tested the results with a basic network model. I set up a virtual private network to connect remote connection. The client computer not only connects to the router, but also to another server on the local network. Specifically in this case, to the network storage server. Good luck.